This time on the Prop Master, we're going to do a quick and easy project that is compatible with pretty much any EVA foam helmet and tackles the question of what do you do to add that last bit of fit and finish that really adds some believability to your helmet and also hides the, uh, the interior. Face it, we've all been there where you spent hours upon hours working on a helmet, getting it exactly the way you want to, but anyone who's shorter than you is seeing something that's not quite as nice. Well, the answer to that is this. There's a neck ring and collar. It kind of simulates the pressure seal that you'd find in a space helmet or uh, even more like a deep sea diving helmet. What you do is you put this on first and then you put your helmet on and then you just pull the collar up and it pops into place. It really makes the, uh, the bottom of the helmet look much nicer and it's quick and easy to make. I made this one out of some EVA foam and uh, an old turtleneck that I had. Today we're going to do the same thing for my son's Django Fett helmet using a mock turtleneck that he's grown out of. But this should work just fine. It should match the, the rest of the, the flight suit and I think it's going to be a really nice addition. So stick around and uh, let's see if we can't knock this thing out. For this project you're going to need a piece of EVA foam, an old turtleneck that you don't mind sacrificing, tin neodymium magnets that are small, something that you can cut a hole that's the right size for the magnets. More about those later. A sharpie pen or equivalent. A sharp knife. Some super glue. Barge cement. And of course, the helmet that you want to make this for. The first thing you want to do is to lay your helmet on top of the EVA foam and then use your marker to trace around the outside of the helmet. Next, measure in the width of your EVA foam, which should be roughly three-eighths of an inch or one centimeter. Do this periodically all the way around. You're going to want to straighten out this area where the ears pop out. Or if you're using a different helmet, any area that is attached to the basic outline. Now you can continue on measuring 
Ich mit dem Stock. Now just connect your dots. I had to take a break there while I took apart my garage trying to find the cap that I knocked off behind the work area. <laughs> so the next thing you want to do is mark another line on the inside that's going to be basically the width of the collar itself. Um, I don't have a predetermined amount for that. It needs to be uh, small enough that you can get your head through it, um, but thick enough that it's reasonably rigid, but you want it to be flexible at the same time. So I'd say a good amount would be well, maybe just slightly inside that 3 8 or 1 centimeter. And I'm probably just going to freehand this. This doesn't have to be accurate at all. Now you basically want to cut out this piece in the middle. Now remember, because of the way you measured this, you want to cut on the outside of this middle line. And you know, you can probably go to the middle of the inside line. But you can go down the outside of that one if you want to stay consistent. But it's this middle line that you're most concerned with as far as making sure that it, you get it pretty close. This will be what determines how it fits into your helmet. And you can go ahead and test fit this. This will be a lot more flexible once you cut the ring out. Now cut out the inner circle. The only real important thing here is to make sure that your head can fit through this. It'll have a certain amount of flex to it. Okay. Now that you have your neck ring, you're going to want to uh, put some holes in it to put your magnets in. Now, this is a little smaller than uh, I'm used to taking cores out of the foam with, so I went to Home Depot to try to find some brass rods, and to my surprise, I could not find any of the, um, the brass rods that I used to be able to find there. Um, I couldn't find any copper rods or uh, pipes either. Um, but what I did find were these. Um, they're basically copper crimps that you use to crimp large cables together with. They're over in the uh, electrical area and they're just the right size for these magnets. So what I did was I took my coarsest sanding stick and I laid it on the ground and I just took one of these with some uh, needle nose pliers. 
and just sharpened it up. And if it gets a little bit out of round, you can then take your pliers and just push them in there and round it off again. Now basically you just want to do one on each side up here near the front, one on each side a little bit past where it straightens out here, pretty close to where the, uh, the back end of the ears are, and then do one in the very middle, in the back. And you just take You don't have to go in very far. You don't have to go in a little more than an eighth of an inch. You want it to be a little too shallow as opposed to a little too deep. kind of choke up with your pliers so you don't go any deeper than you need to. I originally tried to go in from the inside so that it wouldn't try to pull the magnets out of the foam. But even with these uh, powerful rare earth magnets, they're not quite powerful enough to uh, hold everything in place if there's anything between them. Now, if any of these are too deep, you're going to want to kind of plug them up. At this point, go ahead and take one of your magnets and fit it into one of your holes. And you want it to be as close to flush as you can. This one's in a little bit deep. So take one of the, the cores that you cut out earlier, one of the thinner ones preferably, and put just a tiny little bit of super glue in there and drop your plug in. And do that for all of the holes that you've made so far. And that's, there you go, that's more what you want to see. If anything, it's a little bit shallow but it's pretty close to flush. And once you have that, just go ahead and put some super glue in your hole and drop your one of your magnets into it. You want it to um, get the super glue on the sides as well as just on the bottom. I'm using that piece of copper since it's not magnetic to kind of push it in place. Gloves would actually be a pretty good thing to have right now because once again I want to try to super glue my fingers together. I 
make sure I put my gloves on. I try to put gloves on every time I use any kind of glue. Now I've got some kicker for that. This uh, zip kicker will make the super glue cure instantly. The downside is that it smells an awful lot like bug spray. So you have to kind of, if you have more patience or if you have less patience then you have to deal with the, uh, the smell. Now it's time to deal with your turtleneck. Now initially I was going to try and use one of my son's mock turtlenecks that he'd outgrown but what I found when I tried it off, when I actually tried it on him is that with a mock turtleneck because it's so much shorter, the collar is so much shorter, it really needs to be small. I mean, it has to be very tight around your neck. Um, otherwise, your chin actually kind of sticks through it pretty easily um, once you put it in the helmet. So a turtleneck is definitely better for this. This is not my son's turtleneck. This is one of my old turtlenecks. Um, but because it's a turtleneck and has such a long neck, it still works fine for someone that's much smaller than me. And what you want to do is come out, I don't know, maybe four or five inches. And you don't have to be real precise about it, just kind of eyeball it. And take some scissors and just kind of cut that out. I'm cutting both sides at once, so it's probably better that I go a little more. Okay, and we can get rid of the rest of this. So this is the part that's going to face down. And so, Basically, you just want to kind of spread this out into a circle with the turtleneck collar sticking up through your neck ring. I kind of messed up on this part. What you actually want to do is the opposite of this, which is face the shirt upside down so that the collar is facing down and the inside of the shirt is facing up. You can turn the neck inside out if you need to and then lay the neck ring on top of it, similar to this, but with the side that was up when you traced the outline around your helmet still facing up. And take your Sharpie and mark a line maybe an inch out. Now I can cut away all the excess material. Now it's time for the barge cement. Basically I'm going to put some barge cement on the sides of the neck ring, one coat, and probably also this top part of the neck ring. And I'll coat the shirt, this whole you know, sort of one inch area of the shirt out here with barge cement as well. Needless to say, once you put this barge cement all over this uh, shirt, you have to be careful with this shirt, otherwise it'll glue itself into a big ball.
let's get the top as well. I don't want to get this any closer, otherwise it will prematurely glue itself to the shirt. Once again, I'm not wearing my clothes. What am I doing? I think it's because this is such a quick project that I'm not doing any planning. I'm just kind of doing it. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry and then we'll put on a second coat. Okay, I've got my gloves on and I'm ready for the second coat. let that dry and then we can put them together okay this is just about dry I've been taking these pins and just kind of tacking the edges out since I'm actually working on a rubber surface and I can do this I thought I'd take advantage of it that just kind of prevent all this stuff from sticking to itself there's a couple areas here that are a little tacky, but I think they're okay. Same goes with the collar, it's 99% good. You just want to set this. So that you're kind of equal distances from the sides and the back around this collar itself. You can't get it 100%. There'll be a little bit more room in the back than there is on the sides, but you want the majority of the extra space to be in the front. So that it has already stuck and adhered. So I'd like to move that forward about. I don't know, a quarter of an inch, but it's already stuck on the bottom, so I think we're gonna go with that. <laughs> and I think I'll do, I'll do is I'll just pull. Piece up, I pull a pin out, and then I'll kind of wrap it around the collar, or the, the ring. Wrap the collar around the ring. Okay, I just realized that I made a mistake. Um, you want to do everything the way I just did it, except you want the shirt to be um, the inside of the shirt facing up. Right now, the way I have it here, this is the outside of the shirt. And you actually want to have it the other way around so that it's the inside that's facing up. Um, because right now that's what the bottom would look like and it's okay but it's not great what you want is that to be the bottom um, and right now uh, it's inside out like that <laughs> so uh, you want the you want to see the inside of the shirt facing up when you glue this down. Now that you have your piece, you want to take your next magnets and you just kind of find <laughs> the magnets on here, which should not be very hard to do. Okay, 
There we go. So now you have all five mag magnets here. I'm going to pick a paint marker. I know that's not going to rub off. And I'm just going to put a dot. Now will tell me that's the side that goes in. And you could, if you wanted to, you could like mark one, two, three, four, five, and then mark each location, one, two, three, four, five. That way you knew that it was in the right spot. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take it out and glue it into position. That way I won't lose track of them. So you just wanna lay this in position. And now I'm gonna mark where I want these to be. kind of want to make sure you're holding the magnet where you just marked so that the next magnet will be in the right place when you mark it. So now we're basically going to do the same thing that we did on the, uh, the neck ring, but we're going to do it for the helmet. Now remember you don't want to be very deep, so really kind of choking up so that the tip of this is so the tip of this is almost at the end. And I'm just going to go to each location. sure you're at least uh, an eighth of an inch from the edge of the helmet. Now I'm just going to pull out the core. Make sure you get it all. Sometimes it tears. And just like on the neck ring, you want to just pick one of your magnets and measure the depth. And if any of them are too deep, and that one is just slightly too deep, or well, maybe even more than slightly, you just go in with uh, some of your material. I'm going to cut this down. I usually take my thickest little core that came out and I'll cut it into little wafers. You can also take a piece of scrap and cut a core out. This way you don't have it squished by the, uh, the pliers when you're pulling it out.
Now cut this into wafer size little pieces. Single little wafers. Or discs, I guess you could call them. You should be able to get at least four of them. Just be careful to cut your finger. Four of them, but one of them is going to go flying off into space. So, three. I declare that three will be enough. And you just want to repeat that process all the way around the helmet. Okay, so you just want to do this the exact same way you did on the neck ring. I have the helmet like this and I have the neck ring uh, parallel to it. That way I can keep track of everything. And so I just want to go in here. With super glue. I'm going to go over this side and find the magnet that goes with it. The mark goes to the inside. And you just want to repeat that for all five spots in the helmet. And that's it. Other than the fact that I put this on backwards. Um, it really should be like this. There's finished product right there. Um, you just slip this on over your head so that it's down your shoulders. Then put the helmet on, and then you just Pull this up into place and it will snap right into place. And there you have it. If uh, this had been done the right direction, then, uh, <laughs> then it would be better, but. As it is, it still looks pretty good. Well, there you have it. Now you're ready to seal up your own helmet, block the view inside, and give it a more finished, believably real appearance. As always, I hope this video was helpful, and if it was, go ahead and like it. Subscribe so you can stay up to date with my most current projects and check back often just because it really helps the channel. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next video.